This is me unboxing a package that I bought from the Pie Hut. These are all the items that I bought with their respective prices. And these are all you need for a very affordable and beautifully minimalistic home server. This is the total. And once you're done with it, let's get on with the OS installation and other configs. Okay, I just want to install the minimal version without a graphical user interface. Let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager. All right, select the Pi device that you have. I have Raspberry Pi 5. And don't choose this one if you don't want the full installation with graphical user interface. Instead, go here. There's a bunch of other options too. I'll just go with the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Choose the USB device. Uh, I have these pre-filled as I've already done this one. So just fill up the Pi name here, host name. Localization, keyboard layout. Create a username and password. You'll use these two SSHs into the Pi, so make sure you remember these. Here we will configure the Wi-Fi options. I guess you could also just plug it in via the Ethernet, but I chose to use Wi-Fi to have the Pi close to me. I'm lazy. Make sure to enable SSH with password authentication. Um, I don't know about this one, I'll just keep it off. And I guess then you can go ahead and write. It might open up the folder and request you to format the USB before writing it. I'll speed this process up a little bit. Once the writing is completed, it will run a verification check. You can go ahead and press finish here as long as all the customizations were applied. Then it's time to remove the freshly written USB stick. You can go ahead and plug it in the Pi and power up the Pi. Once the Pi is powered up, it'll install the OS automatically and you can go right ahead and Get in your default gateway dashboard where you should find the freshly created Pi and find out the IP address so you can SSH into it. You can go ahead and accept this. Okay, finally in the Pi. With this command, you can see the OS release. As you can see, it's Debian Trixie 13. Host name is Raspi, just like configured. And these two commands show us that the OS is actually still installed on the USB rather than on the dedicated SSD. So we gotta fix this next. To do that, we're gonna use this RPI clone tool. You'll find the link in description. Let's go ahead and SSH into our Pi. Elevated permissions. The documentation is great. You should read it before doing this so you understand what you're doing. Let's copy this command here, paste it, run it. Well done. Well, as you can see, it's still booting from the USB, so we just need to fix this. And to do that, we're going to use the RPI clone. We're going to copy the current bootable source into the SSD, which in my case is the NVMe 0N1. And here you can see the booted disk and the destination. You can just go ahead and type yes here, enter, and no need to name it, just go ahead and press enter. This should not take too long. Go 41 seconds. You can go ahead and press enter here. All right, let's see what it created. Now there's two partitions on the NVMe 0 and 1. 
and the 512 megabytes will be used for the booting. Booty. Let's go ahead and use Raspi config tool. This blow thing will open. You want to go to advanced options, boot order, and choose the NVMe slash USB boot. All right, verify success. We can go ahead and finish and boot up the Pi. And now it should boot from the NVMe rather than the USB. Let's make sure. Yep, here you can see that the boot slash firmware is now under NVMe rather than the USB. You can go ahead and remove the USB and that's it. Now you have your affordable minimalistic home server. In the following videos, I'll teach you what you can run on this home server and how. Thank you. Bye.